can be very hard to envision how to fix up and decorate a space, especially if it's currently in very rough shape, just like this area under our deck. Do you have any outdoor spaces that look something like this? An area that could be used for something better, like entertaining or unwinding at the end of the day, but instead it's just piled high with junk? Well, you're not alone, and we're going to help you get fresh ideas on how you can transform and update that space by showing you exactly what we did with ours. Earlier this summer, we were able to turn our deck from an old weathered mess into a beautiful and cozy space, but this disaster lives just below that, so it's time that we do something about this eyesore. Let's see if we can turn this literal junk pile into a pretty patio. Do you think that we can do it? My dad Benny and my husband Alex didn't look so confident. This patio makeover started with the two of them staring hopelessly at the pile. When the initial shock wore off, my dad came up with a plan for what we needed to get rid of and where to store things we wanted to keep. We know that when we have stuff piling up like this, it's time to purge. We sort everything into categories to either donate, keep, throw out, or sell. The goal is to have less stuff that needs to be stored in the first place. My mom Amanda and I also helped. We all worked together, which helped it to go faster. That is definitely one really nice benefit to being adults who all live in and own this home together. We can all help out on projects like this. Very in long. this pile of stuff that we're cleaning up are a couple of pieces that we didn't end up reusing on our deck after redecorating it, but they are perfect to use down here. One of those pieces is this old pallet turned planter, and the other is this grilling table. We will also be keeping this plastic storage bin down here because it's very handy. But these giant slabs of wood that we're holding onto for potential future projects had to go. But they're heavy, so my dad loaded them up on a hand cart. Where do you want to go? I don't know. <laughs> I just know I gotta move it. And took them around the house to store them in the garage. Off you go then. <laughs> With that, we decided to call it a night, leaving the space in much better shape than when we started, but there's still more we want to do to take it from just a plain under the deck area to more of an inviting patio where we actually want to hang out. And in order to do that, we need some pretty flowers because flowers and plants take any outdoor space to the next level. We have three big planters that we want to fill. So we gathered together all of the plants that we bought on a table to make planting out each planter easier. But before we go any further with planting, we need to spray paint one of the planters. My mom found this planter for free on the side of the road and instantly knew that it would look much better with a fresh coat of paint. I suggested spray painting it black and we love how nice the slightly shiny black made it look. We always like to use Rust-Oleum spray paint and we will link the exact one we use for you down in the description so that you can use this same color too. While that dries, let's go back to planting the flowers. Dad, how do you think it turned out? Oh, beautiful. We already had a couple different bags of potting soil, so we started by dumping them into our wheelbarrow to mix and combine them all evenly. For each of the three pots that we have, we plan to plant one larger centerpiece plant in the middle and then fill in the outer edge with smaller colorful flowers and filler plants. After combining the soil, we filled our first planter almost to the top with dirt, planted a canna as the center plant, and then filled in around it with super bells, sweet potato vine, and creeping ivy. Next, we filled this big green ceramic pot that we've had for a few years with potting mix and planted a dragon tree in the center. Repeating the process of the first planter, we filled in along the edges with colorful impatience. And now for the pot that we were most excited to beautify, the black planter that we spray painted earlier. This one got this really pretty white mandevilla vine along with some super bells and a sweet potato vine as well as some creeping jenny. We also added this little wooden trellis so that the mandevilla could vine up and show off its pretty blooms. As soon as our planters were ready to go, we wanted to put them in their spots, but first we had to finish off clearing out the new patio area. For the last couple of years, we have used these large round slate pavers to help create a feel of a patio down here, but we want to take this space in a different direction. We decided to reuse these pavers in a different part of our yard. We have this little fire pit area on the side of our house that already had a few of the same pavers, so we decided to move them up there to round out that area and make it more defined. My dad got the tough job of lifting and rolling these big boys up the hill 
while my mom and I weeded the gravel under the deck. My dad is at least very clever and knew how to make lifting these heavy pieces of slate stone easier by using a shovel as leverage. We did offer to help, but he insisted that he could do it. After he rolled all of those slate pieces up the hill, our fire pit area looked a little like this. So we actually ended up upgrading two of our outdoor areas in one shot. With all of those papers gone, we raked out the gravel a bit and got ready to finally place our pretty planters. We chose to frame the patio corner to help create an edge and to better define the space. We placed our biggest planter in the very corner as our foundational piece, and then we brought in this green planter since it was slightly shorter to help create a layered look. The last touch for this trio is this planter tray turned bird bath. We filled it with water for the birds and other smaller wildlife to enjoy. Then we placed the last planter on the other side of the patio for a bit of balance. We were very happy with this corner that we created but still felt it needed something else. So we headed to the garden center at Lowe's for one more thing. My mom got the idea of adding some landscaping rocks around the base to help finish it off. We got two bags of egg rocks and put them all along the base of the pots and it was exactly what it needed. Before putting the last touches on the patio, one final thing we quickly needed to do was pressure wash this space. My dad recently got a brand new default pressure washer and he was definitely excited to have an excuse to use it. We just needed to pressure wash the wall and this plastic storage tub. It's just so satisfying to watch the dirt and mildew clean right off. This step was very needed. With the pressure washing done, it's now finally time to add the last finishing touches and see if we pulled off creating a pretty patio out of what was once a junk pile. We finished by sticking some plants in this pallet wood planter that I mentioned earlier. This was a great way to easily add some greenery along the wall. Then my mom and I brought in this patio set that we already had to create a seating area. We have more plans for this space in the future to add an outdoor rug and an outdoor sectional with side tables possibly next year but for now we are thrilled with phase one of this project of cleaning it up and making it usable again next watch our full house tour to see all the makeovers we plan to do now that we own this home